Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. It is necessary to insist on the necessity of maintaining unimpaired and of perpetually cultivating the healthy attitude of mind, which is required from the distinguishing of truth from illusion. Please continue watching for the reflective spiritual insights of Dr. Rudolf Steiner, vegetarian. That means how are you in Bosnian, one of the official languages of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Selfless viewers, I'm Naida. The charismatic people of Bosnia and Herzegovina send you love and warmth. May your souls be free and shielded by the mighty wing of God. Welcome to the Flame of the Spiritualized Vision, Enlightenment on the Way of Initiation by Dr. Rudolf Steiner, Vegetarian, on Words of Wisdom. Born in 1861, Dr. Rudolf Steiner was a great Austrian polymath, philosopher and scientist, who made influential contributions in the fields of education, science, spirituality, and medicine. He is perhaps best known for pioneering the holistic educational methods for the Waldorf schools. An eloquent public speaker and gifted writer, he gave over 6,000 lectures in his lifetime and gained recognition as a literary critic. His writings cover a wide range of subjects, and he published more than 25 books, including Mysticism at the Dawn of the Modern Age, The Way of Initiation, and Intuitive Thinking as a Spiritual Path, The Philosophy of Freedom. He developed and taught an esoteric spiritual philosophy called Anthroposophy, based on the science of the spirit. Today we have the opportunity to read a selection from the profound works of Dr. Rudolf Steiner in his book The Way of Initiation. In the chapter titled Enlightenment, the philosopher elaborates and shares valuable advice on a method for becoming aware of an intangible world and on developing one's psychic abilities as a prudent part of one's path to initiation. Enlightenment Particular stress must be laid on the importance of feeling with intensity that which one thinks. In calmness of mind, a single thought must be vitally experienced within oneself to the exclusion of all disturbing influences. Sufficient time must be taken to allow the thought and the state of feeling connected therewith to become as it were embedded in the soul. If that is accomplished in the right way, possibly not until after numerous attempts, an inward force will make itself felt, and this force will create new powers of perception. The grain of seed will appear as if enclosed in a small luminous cloud. The spiritualized vision of the student perceives it as a kind of flame. This flame is of a lilac color in the center, blue at the edges, then appears 
that which one could not see before and which was created by the power of thought and feeling brought into life within oneself. That which was physically invisible, the plant which will not become visible until later on, has there revealed itself to the spiritual eye. It is pardonable if to many men all this appears to be mere illusion. Many will say, what is the value of such visions or such hallucinations? And many will thus fall away and no longer continue to tread the path. But this is precisely the important point not to confuse. At this difficult stage of human evolution, spiritual reality with the mere creations of fantasy and to have the courage to press bravely onward instead of growing timorous and faint-hearted. On the other hand, however, it is necessary to insist on the necessity of maintaining unimpaired and of perpetually cultivating the healthy attitude of mind which is required for the distinguishing of truth from illusion. Never during all these exercises must the student surrender the fully conscious control of himself. He must continue to think as soundly and sanely in these spiritual conditions as he does with regard to the things and occurrences of ordinary life. It would be unfortunate if he lapses into reveries. He must at every moment be clear-headed and sober-minded, and it would be the greatest mistake if the student, through such practices, lost his mental equilibrium or if he were prevented from judging as sanely and clearly as before the matters of work a day life. The disciple should therefore examine himself again and again to find out whether he has remained unaltered in relation to the circumstances among which he lives, or whether perchance he has lost his mental balance. He must ever maintain a calm repose within his own individuality and an open mind for everything, being careful at the same time not to drift into vague reveries or to experiment with all sorts of exercises. The lines for development here indicated belong to those which have been followed and whose efficacy has been demonstrated in the schools of occultism from the earliest ages, and none but such will here be given. Anyone attempting to employ methods of meditation devised by himself or which he may have come across in the course of promiscuous reading will inevitably be led astray and will lose himself in a boundless morass of incoherent fantasies. A further exercise which may succeed the one described above is the following. Let the disciple place himself in front of a plant which has attained the stage of full development. Now let his mind be absorbed by the reflection that the time is near at hand when this plant will wither and die. Nothing he should say to himself, nothing of what I now see before me will endure, but this plant will have evolved seeds which in their turn will grow into new plants. 
Again, I become aware that in what I see something lies concealed which I cannot see. I will fill my mind wholly with the thought that this plant form with its colors will cease to be. But the reflection that the plant has produced seeds teaches me that it will not disappear into nothing. That which will prevent this disappearance, I can at present no more see with my eyes than I could originally discern the plant in the grain of seed. The plant, therefore, contains something which my eyes are unable to see. If this thought fully lives in me and combines with the corresponding state of feeling, then in due time they will again develop a force in my soul which will ripen into a new kind of perception. Out of the plant there grows once more a flame-like appearance, which is of course correspondingly larger than that which was previously described. This flame is greenish at the center and is tinged with yellow at the outer edge. He who has won this vision has gained greatly, inasmuch as he sees things not only in their present state of being, but also in their development and decay. He begins to see in all things the spirit of which the bodily organs of sight have no perception, and he has taken the initial steps on that road, which will gradually lead him to the solution by direct vision of the secret of birth and death. To the outer senses, a being begins to exist at its birth and ceases to exist at its death. This, however, only appears to be so because these senses are unable to apprehend the concealed spirit. Birth and death are only for this spirit transformations, just as the unfolding of the flower from the bud is a transformation enacted before our physical eyes. But if one desires to attain direct perception of these facts, one must first awaken the spiritual vision by the means here indicated. In order to meet an objection which may be raised by certain people already possessed of some psychical experience, let it be at once admitted that there are shorter ways than this and that there are persons who have direct perception of the actualities of birth and death without having had to pass through all the stages of discipline here set forth. There are also human beings endowed with high psychical faculties to whom only a slight impulse is necessary for the developing of these powers. But they are exceptional and the methods described above are safer and are capable of general application. Similarly, it is possible to gain some knowledge of chemistry by special methods, but in order to make safer the science of chemistry, the recognized reliable course must be followed. An error fraud with serious consequences would result from the assumption that the goal could be reached more simply by allowing the mind to dwell merely on an imaginary plant or a grain of seed. 
it may be possible by such a means to evoke a force which would enable the soul to attain the inner vision. But this vision will be, in most cases, a mere figment of the imagination, for the main object is not to create arbitrarily a mental vision, but to allow the veritable nature of things to form an image within one's mind. The truth must come up from the depth of one's own soul, not at the call of one's ordinary self, but rather must be the objects of one's perception themselves, exercise their magical power, if one is to perceive their inner reality. Insightful viewers, we thank you for your kind presence for today's words of wisdom. Please join us again tomorrow for part two of this program. Coming up next is on Manja Freak Vegan, presented by Chef Ayaba Galba's Vegan, part one of two, right after Noteworthy News. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television for more uplifting programming. May we all be united and attuned to the endless beauty of the higher spheres in God's blessings. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule and suprememastertv.com forward slash WOW. Nos programs offer plusieurs langues. Veuillez visiter suprememastertv.com bar oblique schedule et suprememastertv.com bar oblique WOW. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Visiten suprememastertv.com barra inclinada schedule y suprememastertv.com barra inclinada WOW. Acara kami menyediakan banyak bahasa. Silakan lihat suprememastertv.com garis miring schedule dan suprememastertv.com garis miring. W-O-W -W.